Hi, everyone. Good afternoon now. It's because we're uploading these in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. I'm Paul, the pressure-fed astronaut. This is End of Mission, the podcast where we talk about space missions that have ended. Who are you? I'm Face of Sarcasm. I'm some guy. You're the guy I'm holding hostage 1,700 miles away from me. Yeah, you've somehow managed to get a gun to my head. That's... Yeah, That's I'm, impressive. I, I've managed to hold you hostage from 1,700 miles away. What does that say about you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. It's kind of like in uh, Blazing Saddles, you know, when he, the sheriff holds himself hostage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're off to a good start, aren't we? We're doing great. All right. So we're talking about a space shuttle mission, STS-34. Okay. Which we freed ourselves from the awful numbering system of the space shuttle program, for now at least. For now. It will yeah. be back. The numbering yeah. system will return at Avengers Endgame. Yeah. I didn't see that one, did I? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> did, have I seen this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm 1,700 miles away. <laughs> oh, gosh. So what do you think this space shuttle mission's about? Uh, I think it is about space and shuttling missions to it. You know, like uh, in this particular instance, about uh, Balileo. Bal- Balala- Bali? Leo. Yeah. I thought it was about friendship. I mean, it could be about that, too. What do you think this looks like it's about? I mean... Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm so confused <laughs> now. So am I. It's about friendship and the friends you make along the way. And it's on about journeys family. You take. That's what makes it so special. No, this one's not about... Look at this. All these, these are not the same last names, as you can tell. They're not family. They're yeah. friends, though. They're very close friends. They have a sitcom together. Okay. What's the sitcom called? STS-34. Got it. It, 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 yeah, it didn't work past the pilot. <laughs> okay. I think we should start this mission before this gets way off the rails. <laughs> yeah. So actually what I talk about this mission was supposed to be. Okay. It's called STS-61G for Galileo. Mm. Actually, it was just, yeah. Uh, so it was original Galileo deployment mission. That's what this is about. Okay. This guy. Balileo. Oh, that's G. Okay, that's, that's a G. Galileo. Galileo. Okay. Yeah. Galileo. Yeah. Galileo. <laughs> Gonna pronounce it wrong, right? Everyone says, you know, nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. nuclear. Nuclear ear. That's how I'm going to say it now. It's nuclear ear. Big smashy bang bang. Yeah. Spicy rocks. So the original mission this was supposed to be was STS-61G. So 1986, Kennedy Space Center. What number is is G in the alphabet? <laughs> uh, seven. Potato. Seven. Okay. Seventh is the seventh uh, mission of 1986. So it was going to launch on... May 20th, 1986. Now, the, actually, the initial one was STS-23 way back in, like, 1977. Mm-hmm. But once things, you know, happened, it was going to be uh, STS-61G. Right. This would have been the third space shuttle mission after STS-51L, Challenger. Ah. Now, what do you think happened to change that? Well, Challenger happened. Challenger. <laughs> yeah. Which, I'll just say this, the mission patch for this one... I think it's better than this, right? You got Jupiter, you got the big, you know, flaming trail from mm-hmm. Earth to Jupiter versus... Eh, yeah. yeah. I think it looks better. So yeah. the crew of this mission would have been four guys. Uh, Commander is David Walker, who we saw in the last mission, STS-51F. Hey, he's back. Yep, that's him here. Mich- uh, not mission specialist. Pilot would have been Ronald Grabe, which I don't... I don't remember who that is. Uh, mission Specialist 1 would have been Norm Thagard. That's this guy. Hey, hey. Uh, and then Mission Specialist 2 would have been James Van Hooften. That's a name for you. Van Hooften. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the orbiter for that mission would have been Atlantis, OV-104. This would have been the 28th mission of the Space Shuttle Program and the third for Atlantis. Okay. And it would have been the second flight of... Shuttle Centaur. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Shuttle Centaur. Oh, wow. So this is this is actually what Galileo was going to be. This is what the mission was supposed to do. Dang. That's incredible. So, 
So the problem with a vehicle like the space shuttle is you can't go beyond low Earth orbit. Right. Because it's heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. <laughs> so what do you do? How do you get payloads, every, especially if this is going to be the one-size-fits-all replacement for all launch systems? Do you put the space shuttle on a diet and exercise? No, you come up with an increasingly complicated refueling architecture. Ah, okay. All right. Wait, wait that's a different one. Oh. <laughs> Throwing shade at somebody. Mm. Instead, you have this big payload bay, you put upper stages in it. Right? Oh, okay. We've seen these before. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Got the PAMs. <laughs> that's what we've seen so far. <laughs> right. For upper stages. So this was, was going to be the ultimate upper stage. Because solid kick motors can't do that much. Especially if you want to go interplanetary, which, you know, NASA. They yeah. go interplanetary. You got to launch out of the shuttle. So they decide to use Centaur. Ooh. Centaur is that mythical upper stage, right? We've been flying it since 1963. Liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen with RL-10s. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to put in the space shuttle payload bay. Okay. We'll build a special one called Centaur G and G Prime. It's two of them. For Galileo? No. It's just, just because. The number, it's just a numbering scheme. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the number G. Yeah, the number G. Uh, so, until then, I just want to make notes to make sure I get all this. So, the one we've seen a lot is the Star 48, which is called PAM, uh, the PAM-D. Mm-hmm. Then the one we're going to talk about today is the interim upper stage. That's why it's called interim at this point. Because mm. it's the one between not having Centaur-G and having Centaur-G. Got it. Okay. Now, the first two flight Centaurs were actually built, along with the cradles that would have carried them on the space shuttle, right? Because you got to mount it inside of it. Right. Uh, and the fun fact here, SC-1, the first one, rolled out on August 13th, 1985 to the Star Wars theme. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, like the main theme or the Imperial March? Because I just imagined the Imperial March. <laughs> well, no, the main theme. Okay. The Imperial good. March comes later, <laughs> if you read the slide. So the first shuttle Centaur was meant for STS-61F which would have launched the Ulysses spacecraft on May 15th, 1986. Ulysses was going to do the International Solar Polar Orbiter, so it's going to fly over the sun's poles. Oh, now, wow. You want to do a plane change in the solar system, you got to fly by something or have a really small spacecraft. So it's actually going to do another Jupiter mission. It's going to do a flyby of Jupiter, and Jupiter would have thrown it up to a highly inclined orbit. Just would have yeeted it over the poles. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Now, you'll notice that May 15th and May 20th are pretty close. There are some schedule issues with this. Yeah. And then Challenger happens, right? August 1985, Challenger's January 1986. Yeah. Shuttle Centaur is canceled in the wake of Challenger over safety concerns. Astronauts started nicknaming it the Death Star. (laughs) So the Imperial March then started coming out. (laughs) Yep. Uh, The reason being for this was there's a few of them that are listed. Uh... The big one is that the SSMEs would have to fire at 109% thrust. Oh. Now, when I sit, now just for to be clear, the shuttle had done 103%, and Challenger it was at 106%. Oh. So that and this would have been really off, pushing them. Now, just for a clear, when they say 100-something percent off the baseline SSME, at this point they've been operated a bit, so they're always operating at 103%. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just a carryover. The one time we did fly uh, the shuttle at 109% was STS-93 with Chandra. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about that mission? No. That's the mission where a piece of the injector fell out of one of them and hit the side of the engine. Oh. And they nearly lost it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a risk there. <laughs> yeah, no wonder they call it the Death Star. Jeez. Yeah. No, that was, no, Centaur was Death Star. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the other real issue was with solid kick stages, they're pretty safe. They're inert. You can kick them. You can say mean things to them, and they won't blow up and kill you. Okay. They're, they're chill. They're cool. Yeah. Centaur is a lot cooler. It's got liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, which means it would boil on the pad and during flight, which means you'd have hydrogen and oxygen in the payload bay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that does not sound <laughs> like a very good mixture. <laughs> no. The real concern is if they had to do a transatlantic abort, right, where they have to go fly across the ocean, 
because they'd land with a centaur with boiled hydrogen and oxygen in the back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, no smoking on the tarmac this time, okay? <laughs> and the other one was, because I think the plan, if I remember correctly, was they would actually vent some of the, they'd actually dump it mm-hmm. out of the shuttle if they had to do a transatlantic abort. That, oh, yeah, that, that would make sense. That would make sense, yeah. Which I actually have a diagram of the plumbing for fueling centaur in the shuttle. Oh. Uh, it's in one of the slides coming up. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so it actually got to the point, because Rick Hawk, which we've seen him a few times, mm-hmm. was the commander of that of uh, 61F, and he was looking at the other astronauts, and he said, hey, if you want to not fly this mission for any reason, I'll vouch for you. You can walk off at any time, for safety reasons. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Not exactly the safest program. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So this is what it looks like. So, so Centaur G, this would have been DOD missions. That's a D. <laughs> I can't draw them. This would have been NASA. You gotta do the worm logo. I can't do that. It's easier. <laughs> there we go. That's a, that's a worm. Yeah, there we go. So you can kind of see what it looks like, right? So it's, it's designed to fit inside the payload bay. It's as wide as it. It's 170 inches. Uh, it's got a cradle here. This is what the cradle is. Okay. It was the CISS, the KISS. Ah, Yeah, it's cute. Uh, so, yeah, it, yeah, you'd fit it inside the space shuttle at the very back. Right there. See, there's KISS. Ah. Yeah. And then you deploy it with, you know, a Tedris interplanetary mission, a, you know, a secret, ooh, DOD satellite. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. Yep. Uh, so this is how the, the plumbing system would have worked. So there's, uh, we'll see in a picture of the shuttle when it lands. There's like panels on the side of it that are interfaces with the, the launch site. Oh, okay. So they fueled hydrogen in there and then boil off from that. So they actually had, I think they outfitted Atlantis and I think Discovery to support Shuttle Centaur. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And this is the first one. This is SC-1. And you'll recognize all these faces. Yeah. Rick Hawk, John Fabian, David Walker. Yeah. So you guys see how big it is and isn't. Yeah, it's rather large and small. Yeah. It looks a lot bigger than the diagrams. Yeah, it's not that big. So this is the rollout here. These are all employees of, I think, is General Dynamics at this time. So they're playing the Star Wars theme, so you can see there's Jupiter, there's Saturn, because the Saturn mission was being planned at the time. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it's got all the you know, fun people there. And so Shuttle Centaur was canceled, but this led to complementary expendable launch vehicle. So Centaur G actually did fly as Centaur T. Mm. At the time, so right around 84, 85, the Air Force realized that the space shuttle was never going to live back to expectations, especially doing polar launches, which one was actually planned. STS-62A yeah. was planned. But the problem is the shuttle was too heavy to actually do it. Uh, oh. And they were going to use the, the carbon uh, composite uh, shuttle SRBs, which I showed you a picture of, but those were failing, so they just kind of scrapped the whole thing. So the Air Force said, well, we can't replace all launch vehicles if your replacement can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So they came up with what's called Complementary Expendable Launch Vehicle. Have you heard of SRBX? Yes. I just showed it to you. Yeah, yeah. You, did, you showed it to me. Yeah. So that's <laughs> one of the CELV proposals. Another one was called Atlas II, and okay. then the third one was called Titan 34D7. And the big requirement was they had to carry a Centaur G on it. Okay. To, you know, complementary, so it could complement the space shuttle. Right, it could carry uh, the same payloads. So the one that was chosen was Titan uh, 34D7 because it's called Titan IV. Oh. <laughs> and this is them. These are the Titan, the, the Centaur Ts. And as a fun fact, if this is, I think this is Centaur uh, 12 there. This one has a software guidance issue in it. It's going to blow up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, this one's fine, though. I looked it up. It flew. flew a Millstar. But yeah. Okay. So Centaur G does live on, but not on the space shuttle. Yeah. Well, at least they found an alternative. Yeah. Called the interim upper stage. Yes. The permanent interim upper stage. <laughs> Forever in between. The middle child. Oh. Yep. So this is our mission now, STS-34. Okay. We fixed everything. The shuttle's fine now. Our commander is Donald E. Williams, and he's staring right at you. Yeah. He's from Otterbein, Indiana. Wow. Okay. 
I forgot. I looked up where it was because I was curious. I forgot where it is. Well, it's in Indiana. Yeah, that's pretty all you really need to know. Yeah. It's I can understand why he wants to be an astronaut, Michigan. you know? Yeah. Yeah. He was born February 13th, 1942, and he died February 23rd, 2016. Happy birthday. Yeah. Heck, yeah, you'd have a stroke, I think. Dang. Yep. Uh, he's a Navy test pilot. He was a NASA astronaut group 8, TFNG, and mm. he was the pilot on STS-51D. Hmm. Okay. Our pilot is Michael J. McCulley. Okay. He's from, San Di- yeah, he's from San Diego, California. He was born August 4th, 1943. Dude. He was in... Yeah. He was a Navy test pilot, part of astronaut group 10. And he has no space flight experience. So, okay, the, the rookie, the new guy. Yeah, the noob. Yeah. He's also the first submariner, that's how you pronounce it, I have from what I've heard, in space. Okay. So he's been yeah. to the depths as well as the heights. Yeah. It also means he's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. But at least he could handle tight, compact spaces. <laughs> yeah, he can handle being in a, in a sealed can with a bunch of other people, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with no hygiene equipment, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sleep, yeah. I almost joined the Navy. Good thing you did. Think, yeah, I could be. Yeah, instead of doing podcasting, I could be hot bunking on a Los Angeles class right now <laughs> with the fellas. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Our mission specialist one is Shannon Lucid. Hmm. She was born in Shanghai, in the Republic of China. Oh. Before it became People's Republic and Taiwan, uh, she was uh. born January fourteenth, nineteen forty-three. She's a biochemist with a PhD from the University of Oklahoma. Where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. Yes. Hmm. Uh, she's part of NASA astronaut group eight. She's one of the first women in space. Hmm. Uh, she was a mission specialist on STS 51G. Okay. Mission specialist two is Franklin Chang Diaz from San Jose, Costa Rica. Nice. Yeah. He was born April 5th, 1950. Hmm. He was a Physicist and engineer with a PhD from MIT. So, he knows his stuff. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. He's from astronaut group 9, so he's the year after the uh, Shannon Lucid. Okay. Uh, He was the mission specialist on STS-61C, which is the last mission of the space shuttle before Challenger. Oh. Yes. Now, both of these people are very interesting in their own regards. Uh, Shannon Lucid was actually interred by the Japanese in World War II. Oh. Yeah, she spent time in an internment camp. Uh, she wanted to become an astronaut after discovering the works of Robert Goddard. So when she was really young, she wanted to be an astronaut. Okay. Uh, this is the second of her six space flights. Cool. And she's the first and only American woman to have flown and stayed on Mir. So she's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Franklin Chang Diaz is the first Latin American immigrant in space. He's the third Latin American in space, but the first that was an actual immigrant, because he's from Costa Rica. Yeah. He, wow. This is the second of seven space flights he's done. <laughs> so yeah. he's, he's putting, the, putting the work in. <laughs> he must really like flying in space. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because, yeah, you hear about the other guys that just... Like, like John Fabian, right? Mm-hmm. His wife said, you know, you're flying twice. I'm not going to fly anymore. <laughs> right? <Yep. laughs> or the, right? Right. And then he also is the founder of the Ad Astra rocket company. You ever heard of Vasimir? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is his thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh, this is, a, this is a really good slide for people, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, Ellen Baker as Mission Specialist 3. She's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. She was born April 27th, 1953, and she's a medical doctor. Whoa. Yeah. She's from NASA Astronaut Group 10 with no spaceflight experience. Okay. Our orbiter for this flight is Atlantis, OV-104, the last of the original batch. Okay. Because Endeavour was built as a replacement for Challenger. Right. This is the 31st flight of the space shuttle program because numbering is for morons. (laughs) (laughs) And losers. Yeah. This is the fifth flight of Atlantis. Okay. Okay. And this is the second interplanetary mission launched from the space shuttle. Uh, Magellan was launched on STS-30. And where did Magellan go? Venus. Oh, yeah. Which we were right. just at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Vega. Uh, so Check out that is, episode, everyone. <laughs> which we just recorded like an hour ago. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so this is actual photo of the rollout of the shuttle. Ooh. Yeah. Now, there were some anti nuclear ear, because I'm going to say it wrong now, <laughs> protests. Nuclear. Because Galileo has a radioisotope thermoelectric generators on the spacecraft mm-hmm. to power it. Nothing really came of these protests, but the president of the United States had to authorize this launch, and that was George Bush Sr. Oh, wow. He had to authorize the launch because of this. Jeez. Oh, well, yeah, uh, Chernobyl just had recently happened, right? Well, it was just because there's, there's like, anti-nuclear people. They think, you know, anything... Everything that has radioactive stuff in it will just kill you all instantly. You know, like the americium in your smoke detectors. Yep. Uh, you have cancer from that now. It, uh, uh, your your uh, bananas are yeah, radioactive. Yeah, with potassium-40 from the Venus. S- the, the sun is, uh, is radioactive. You know. Yeah. Light is radiation. It is. Yeah, so this is our mission. Also, uh, I think this is true. They loaded Galileo. So you know what this is? What is that? That's the rotating service structure. So there's some payloads that you can't integrate on the shuttle in the payload, like in the payload processing facility. So mm-hmm. what they do is they load it up in a canister and then haul it up to this, right? Because that looks like an interface with the space shuttle, right? Mm-hmm. They'd open up the payload bay doors from the shuttle and then push them in and then mount them onto the shuttle from there. Oh, okay. I think Galileo was done this way. Okay. Because uh, there's DOD payloads also that can't be loaded horizontally. They have to be loaded vertically. Ah, uh, okay. And shuttle, of course, had to carry some DOD payloads. Yeah. Is this our crew? Here they're they are. Red. They're all in red, and there's a gradient of hair, if you if you can see it. That's one of the things I notice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a gradient. <laughs> yeah. Top to, to bottom, left to yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, there's just no to a lot. Yeah. Just, yeah. there's a variety of hairstyles. Diversity, it gets, right? It gets darker and thicker the, the yeah. further you go down the list. <laughs> So here's what's on board the shuttle. This is the important stuff, okay? Yes. Mid-deck experiments. All right. So the one we have pictured here is the 3M polymer morphology experiment. Okay. It's an organic material processing experiment designed to explore the effects of microgravity on polymeric materials as they are processed in space. The focus is on industrial aspects, specifically something called melt. So you melt them and you recrystallize them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so they're bringing on board our polyethylene, nylon 6, and polymer blends. Okay. That's, yeah. So basically so the they're trying to figure out, like, how does making uh, plastic in space work? Yeah. If you melt it down, the constituent parts, and then recrystallize them, what's this going to do? Yeah. So samples are thin films that are 25 millimeters in diameter. They're mounted in a carousel, which means it's really fun, mm-hmm. uh, heated to 200 centigrade, and then have their spectra examined through an infrared camera. And there are 17 samples. So you can see it here. Here's the fun thing. Right. Here's where the little horses go up and down as the, the yeah. persons get on. Yeah. There's a carny there to take all your money mm-hmm. somewhere. There's an interferometer. That's where he, that's where he is. He's going to interfere with your money. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> interfere with your drive. wallet. <laughs> uh, sample cells. Uh, the EAC, of course, and the stress corrosion cracking. Uh, heat exchanger. You know. Uh, and this is kind of the whole experiment itself. We'll see pictures of it. Uh, so there's the gem, which is the graphite epoxy motor. No, that's not what that is. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what that GM, probably a generic equipment machine, something like that. General it, engineering motors. Something like that. And then you got a laptop here. It's ancient technology. That's a laptop? I thought it was a typewriter for a second. <laughs> it basically is. <laughs> so the other experiment uh, that I have diagrams for is the growth hormone concentrations and distribution in plants experiment. Mm. So they're going to juice up some plants, you know, get them that roid rage, right? Yeah. Do some you know, weightlifting competition and punch people. <laughs> yeah, punch the astronauts. <laughs> yeah, so fight them. So the goal is to determine the effects of microgravity on the concentration, turnover properties, and behavior of the plant growth hormone auxin, or auxin. Auxin? auxin. I don't know. In the tissue of shoots of corn, also known as zea maize. So there's 228 seeds will be planted in the experiment. So they'll plant them, they're going to germinate, and they're going to pretty much gas them with nitrogen to see what happens. So they're going to they're, they're gonna juice up and gas uh, the corn just to see like how, how, many, how many reps yeah. it can do. Yeah, so that's, that's what this experiment is here. Okay. And it's got a little lock so it doesn't fight its way out, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so there's also uh, the SC8215 zero-gravity growth of ice crystals from supercooled water with relation to temperature. So pretty much what we're going to see is how do ice crystals grow in microgravity. I feel like that one just keeps coming up, where it's just yeah. like, we got to figure out what these crystals do, man. Yeah, we're growing some crystals, Mr. White. <laughs> okay. yeah. 
The purest. Ninety nine point one percent. Someone cooked here. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this is all. SC stands for student experiment. So kids thought of this. Uh, Children. Uh, so yeah, then uh, mesoscale lightning experiment. So to take pictures of lightning from space. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do it from the other direction. Yeah. From above the clouds. Then you have the Air Force Maui optical site calibration test. So pretty much they're going to take pictures of the space shuttle from Maui oh. and see how well that works. They're also going to yeah, so fly overhead. They're going to dump water from the other waste dumps, right? Uh, and mm-hmm. then they fire the RCS over Maui and they take pictures of it. That's all they're doing. Oh, okay. Uh, they have an IMAX camera on board to record wonderful footage from the shuttle. Right. Yeah, got Christopher Nolan up there doing it himself. Yep. Uh, they have sensor technology experiment, STEX. So that's a radiation detection experiment. It's pretty easy. Look, radiation. Look, radiation. Hey, look at that. It's radiation. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna go. Really, it's gonna freak out with Galileo nearby. There's protesters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think on this one actually, protesters planned to get in and stand under the shuttle, so it wouldn't launch. Wow, uh, I don't think they got that far. Yeah, I remember uh, Mike Mullane's autobiography. This just reminded me of something, where he talked about how I think there were radical groups. I can't remember what. Uh, political group they were, so we can't make fun of them just mm. yet. Uh, Gotta determine if they're good or not. Uh, <laughs> we're planning to kidnap astronauts. What? Like, threaten to do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're obviously bad because yeah, what? Dumb. What do you do? What? I don't. I don't remember what it was. There's something along those lines in the autobiography where he talked about that. Why? Why would you kidnap? Why would you kidnap astronauts? Public value. Uh, right, you, uh, you, you kidnap the janitor. What's the, what are they going to do? Oh, you're going to clean for me? Right? <laughs> kidnap an astronaut. That's an American hero there, right? I mean, yeah, but for what end? To what end? Political goals. Yeah, uh, well, uh, a- ask people who think that taking hostages and pl- uh, kidnapping people is a good idea for political goals. Yeah, yeah. Ask them. Yeah, I'm going to ask you because you have me held hostage <laughs> oh, that's 1,700 true. miles away. Yeah. Remember, kids, comment, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to all your favorite podcast platforms. Or else. <laughs> yeah, please do. I, I know you can't see me right now, but I am blinking out torture in Morse code. Well, that's what you're saying. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dang. You stop he knows. <laughs> so the other experiments are uh, spaceflight tracking and data network. Pretty much they're going to test the handoff between TDRS satellites. They're actually going to see if you can talk to the shuttle all the way down through reentry. Mm. Which they did. Hey, nice. They did that, yeah. They can also test gravity gradient attitude control. So, you know, okay, guys, stop misbehaving or we're going to orient the shuttle the wrong way. <laughs> Pretty much so, right, this thing called gravity gradient stabilization, where spacecraft will naturally orient themselves a certain way based off mass distribution. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you see a few spacecraft are actually designed this, this way. So they have a, a spacecraft on top and they have like a little line down in another spot and they'll just be oriented that way. So that part's always pointing down. Oh, okay. That, yeah, it's great. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to try with that. I'm going to kind of test see if there's any weird oscillations with the atmosphere, any weird interactions, that kind of thing. Okay. So, of course, a really exciting one, a camcorder demonstration. A camcorder? Wow. Know, right? <laughs> yeah. This advanced technology. NASA technology right there with the IMAX cameras. <laughs> Space shuttle. <laughs> Make their own VHS tapes, like the proto vlogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what up, you boy? It's your boy, the, the Franklin pro- Chang Diaz. I got a new rocket design for you. <laughs> Coming at you from orbit. <laughs> yeah. So then I like the way NASA names things Text and Graphic Systems Test. They're testing a printer. <laughs> No, it just, just it do, it keeps running out of cyan for no reason. Yeah. It do, never prints when I want it to. What does PC load letter mean? <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's jammed. It's it's hooked up to the polymer experiment, guys. <laughs> and then they do some medical experiments related to space adaptation syndrome because that's still a thing. Yeah, yeah. That's just a given on all these flights. Yeah. So, now the payload bay, the real science experiment right up here, uh, a gas can. See it right up there? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, some, that's the really interesting thing about this flight. <laughs> the main, uh, our, our main character for this flight. Yeah, the star of the show. Yeah. And then this interplanetary mission right here. So, yeah, this is it being loaded into in the rotating surface structure. Oh, okay, so that's when it's, when it's up. Yeah, so it's because it's standing up. That's how they have to load it in. I wonder if it has to, 
or through how heavy the iOS is, that might be it. Yeah. For I'll whatever have to... reason, they decided that this was better. Just for fun. Because <laughs> they could. <laughs> Want to mess with them? <laughs> guys, yeah. I got a really great oh. idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So these are all the experiments. This is what the shuttle payload bay looks like. So this, of course, is has uh, this <laughs> yeah. shuttle solar backscatter ultraviolet instrument, uh, SS Bov. Bov. Spov. Spov. Yeah. So it's still it's developed to calibrate similar ozone measuring space based equi- uh, instruments on NOAA nine and eleven. No, this isn't. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> National Oceanograph- Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration did nine eleven. There we yeah. have it, folks. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> no, what they did nine eleven. Yep. So the shuttle and these satellites will pass over the same areas uh, within an hour of each other. Right over the towers. <laughs> right over the, yep, right over the towers. And they're going to approach them to see how well they're calibrated. Okay. Which are calibrated to measure ozone specifically. Because at this time, we just discovered the ozone a hole. Oh, right? right. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember that we did nothing and it went away on its own. Yeah, we didn't ban CFCs. Right, of course. Yeah, no. Yeah. We didn't do anything. It just, it just left. Yeah, just magically did that. Mm-hmm. We prayed a lot. Yeah, we stopped talking about it, and it went away. Yeah. So if I just stop bringing you up, you'll just go away, right? Like the charges that we brought up for me taking you hostage. Yeah, which uh, I'm currently filing. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> sitting under the space shuttle right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am literally filing charges right now. <laughs> yeah. Why are you talking about the payload bay? <laughs> Should you be, right? <laughs> There's the FBI negotiator. What do yeah. you want? I'm just trying to... Shush, I'm podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I gotta get this podcast out. Tune in. <laughs> okay, and then the main event of the mission, Jupiter Orbiter and Probe, Galileo. The Galileo. first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter. Nice. It weighs 2.5 metric tons, so it's, you know, it's been neat in a bit, mm-hmm. with a 340-kilogram atmospheric probe. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's mounted on an inertial upper stage for interplanetary injection to a Venus flyby. We'll talk about this more in the next episode, uh, because okay. it's going to do a Venus flyby. So we're going back to Venus again. Hey! hey. <laughs> but you'll notice how it changed from interim to inertial upper stage. Yeah, I wonder why that happened. <laughs> yeah, something happened. Now, what's interesting is there's no uh, Canada arm on this flight. Really? They didn't bring it on. They forgot <laughs> it. <laughs> Where's the Canada arm? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I leave the oven running. Leave the Canada arm off. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, it's uh, Mrs. McAllister from Home Alone going <gasps> the Canada <laughs> arm. <laughs> yeah, it's McCauley. He's sitting on the pad. <laughs> yeah, that actually, that I wish me. the shuttle away. <laughs> that just reminded me. So you know, on STS fifty one F, they had the engine start then turn off. Yeah, I remember uh, the pilot turned to the commander and said, "I didn't touch anything." <laughs> right after that happened. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta absolve myself real quick. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. So, but astronauts Chang Diaz and Baker are EVA crew if they need to go outside and, you know, give the Galileo probe a, t- a pep talk, you know? <laughs> yeah, just like you know, reach around its shoulders. Yeah, it's, it's, like, like, it's okay. You're gonna go to Jupiter. It's gonna be fun. We're all counting on you, bud. I know you're, I know you're scared. I know you're really anxious, yeah. but you got this. You're gonna you do got great. It. You <laughs> yeah. You're going to Jupiter. I mean, who else has gone there, right? Yeah. Yeah, great. going where no one else has gone before means there's no one else there. Okay. Oh, oh there was the the Voyager and Pioneer probes, but they, those, they left. They left. They're gone. Yeah. yeah. They're still still ongoing. Yeah, they're still out there, somewhere. The territory beyond. It's still out there. Still. Out there. That's 1993. This hasn't uh, been made yet. No. Oh, right. Right. Dang it. <laughs> that should be a goal now. Every episode we bring up some movie. That's over 20 years old. Since all of our audience is probably like 17 years old on average, they won't understand it. <laughs> we'll gaslight them. <laughs> yeah. With the gas can. This. Yeah. That's what this is. Yeah, so the gas can, just for clear, is mounted to the RMS. Uh, not the RMS. No, that's not. Then I'm bringing it on this flight. Yeah. Mounted to the side it. of the payload bay. There's two of them. This thing weighs like 1,000 pounds. I don't know why it weighs a thousand. I guess they, I guess they lined it with lead and put bricks on it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's made out of cast iron, and it's got a hat, but it's in the wrong spot. <laughs> it's the bottom hat. Yeah, so it's got a hatch that'll pop open and do some ultraviolet stuff. Yeah, it's great. So also, there's so there's controls actually inside the orbiter to open the door. It's got a little calculator. It looks like a calculator, but it's not. Oh, yeah, you know, a little like, garage door opener. <laughs> yeah, they start <laughs> looking at code. The <laughs> 
Eight zero zero eight five. What? That's not. A, that's not a code in here. I looked. Trust me. <laughs> Dang it. Is there? Wait. Is there eleven thirty four? No. Yeah. Well, we know is no one interest. No one interesting did this mission. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. this is what, so it's got, you know, here it is mounted to the orbiter payload bay. Then it's an internal control that's, you know, plugged into this with a calculator. Uh, they hacked into the, the space shuttle. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, and the memory tapes. Why is the uh, SSBUV uh, uh, firing a laser through the space shuttle? That's, it's doing 9-11. So that's a, that's oh, okay. NOAA 9, all right, and there's the space shuttle, and that's New York City. It's defeating it in, uh. Yeah, defeating it in battle and then doing 9 11. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So, this is uh, Galileo. We're not going to take a look at any of this <laughs> until the next episode. <laughs> okay. But this is Galileo. All this right. This is what we're going to talk about in the next episode. It looks cool, though. It does look really cool. It's got a, it's got a particular uh, look to it, it's an aesthetic. Do you know what's funny? So, does that mm-hmm. satellite bus look familiar to you? Yeah. That's a Voyager bus. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, I, I can just imagine William Shatner, you know, like, yeah. taking V'ger. his thumbs to it. You know, V'ger. Yeah. yeah. It was Gileo. <laughs> yeah. With its, uh, you know, the new cool ear uh, components right here, the RTGs. It looks like it's struggling, like, eh, go, on, go to Jupiter. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jupiter. Yeah. Big planet. Keep, yeah. keep note of this, though, just... For reference in the next episode, just keep note of this. Okay. Let's keep. We'll talk about it in six weeks. All right. All right. So there's a few launch attempts for this mission. So here's the crew doing the walkout. Obviously, you see they changed the flight suits. Yep. From to blue. orange. Yep. Also, they're walking out by the welding area, as you can see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this this I must admit, is not that spectacular. Yeah. This is where they all walk out. <laughs> there's, you know, there's some gravel. <laughs> it's it's dirty. It's wet. <laughs> yeah, it, this it is looks, the way the like Soviets the would walk out. <laughs> what? This is where the Soviets would walk out to the you know the the Baran or the Soyuz, right? Yeah. You got, you got the snow smoking section next to the welding tanks. Yeah. There's no windows. There's a bunch of piping and tubes yeah. and a fence. And I'm pretty sure there's probably a dead mouse back there somewhere. Yeah, there's somewhere. You know, there's a guy in the. There's, there's a guy smoking over here. Obviously, he's not, he's <laughs> yeah. not smoking over there. <laughs> there's a homeless guy camped out around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's not a very spectacular. Uh, the last thing you see on Earth <laughs> before you launch. <laughs> yeah. It's an alley. <laughs> yeah. So, so the first time you can remember Earth. <laughs> yeah. The parking lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a, in an alley. <laughs> yeah. Dirty alley. Uh, so the first launch date is October twelfth, nineteen eighty nine. I don't know why I keep coordinating these with the anniversaries of these missions. I don't know why that happens. keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. So the first launch date's uh, meant for October twelfth, nineteen eighty nine. But there's a faulty main engine controller on SSME number two, so they can't launch. Oh, okay. So the second launch attempt is October seventeenth, nineteen eighty nine. So five days later. But the weather is bad, so they move it to the eighteenth. So six days later. Yes. Then on the 18th, it's delayed because there's rain in the transatlantic abort site. Oh, okay. So they have to wait like an hour to recalibrate it to go to the other one. Jeez. Yeah, so it's moved from Morocco to Spain. Okay. Yeah. Now the liftoff is at 12.53 p.m. Eastern on October 18th, 1989. So it's an afternoon thing, right? You've all had lunch. You're going to launch now. Right, right. Okay. And this is the launch. Look how cool that is. It's a really cool launch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that plume. Again, whenever I do these, I want to make sure I get different... Because the shuttle looks the same every time it launches, right? Yeah, yeah. so you got to get, gotta get the different shots. Make it more interesting. Visually appealing. Also, that's LC-39B. Ooh, okay. That's where SLS launches from. Hey, hey! Ooh! It's a lot less bright, I must say. Oh, yeah, because yeah. SLS launched at night. Yeah. That just lit up the night sky. Yeah, this is the afternoon. Yeah. Okay, so... It's placed, Atlantis is placed into a 307 by 298 kilometer or 191 by 185 mile orbit at 34.33 degrees. Okay. Six hours later, at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Galileo's deployed. Okay. And usually the deployments are saved for the day after launch. In case the crew is mm. sick from space adaptation syndrome. Right. The last thing you want is the guy to hit the button to, you know, puke on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 
But because it was originally planned for Centaur, where you have Boil off to consider, it's up, get that thing out as fast as you can. Also because it's dangerous, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's deployed, and then there's a six-second window to deploy it. Six second. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, we got to do it now. <laughs> yeah. It's six and a half hours in, got to hit it within six seconds. And so this is the deployment here. So they raise it up on the table mm-hmm. and then bop, kick it out. Just, just yeah. Th- in the video. Oh, we got to watch the media video for this. We didn't do that last time. Yeah. It has footage actually from this camera right there. You can see it deploy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Galileo is then boosted on a trans-Venusian injection at 8.20 p.m. So, it's going for Venus. Yeah. We'll talk about it in the next episode, but to get to Jupiter, Galileo has to do a flyby of Venus. Yeah, so, to, to go to the outer solar system, you have to swing by the inner solar system. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You just gotta go quick, uh, go to, pop over to the grocery store, pick up a couple of cigarettes and milk, and then you yeah. can pop on over back to Jupiter. Yeah. So this is the entire deployment sequence. This is the most exciting part of the mission. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's just, that's, this is the exciting part. Uh, yeah, does this look cool, though? Yeah, it looks really cool. I like this imagery. Yeah. You can just see there. It, and it's also cool because you can see one of these spacecraft actually leave. Yeah. You know? Because on other yeah. missions, right, like off you know, Atlas, you don't really see this. You see, like, the shot of it deploying from the Centaur, right, mm-hmm. from the, you know, the, the rear end of it. Mm-hmm. And it's gone. But with this, you actually get a few photos of it, you know, leaving, yeah, going you can away. Say, bon voyage, so long, farewell. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's kind of awkward because you're just like, okay, you're going away now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bye, where you say everyone. goodbye to your friend and you st- keep walking with them for the next half hour. <laughs> yeah, the Minnesota goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, see ya. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a bit about the iOS here for a second because I actually found the user's guide for it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So here it is. So it's mounted on the 1307 bulkhead on the back of the space shuttle. Mm-hmm. It's got a power control units. Again, it's mounted at the rear end uh, for mass balancing reasons. Also because of the payloads, the, the big ones like Tedris actually take up a lot of the payload bay. Also right. the classified DOD satellites. Oh, I thought you said this was the most exciting part of the mission. Well, there's no classified DOD satellites on this one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And there's no cl- again. If they're showing pictures of the payload bay, it's not classified. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the IUS is a two-stage geostationary transfer stage, right? Space shuttle's got to go from low Earth orbit. Can't go from low Earth orbit to geostationary, so you got to have a kick stage for that. So here's right. the whole thing here. Uh, so it's got to you know, it's so it's mounted into the into the shuttle on like I think the launcherons, like the frames. I can't remember okay. the term for it on the side. There's pictures of these. At different bulkheads, you got a control panel in the aft flight deck. I don't have pictures of that. I couldn't find any. Mm. Um, this is what the IUS looks like as an exploded view, right? Two stage solid rocket motor. Here it is here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, fun fact: the second stage has a extendable nozzle. Ooh, like a telescoping nozzle. Yeah, it's really cool. That is awesome. Uh, so yes. Yeah, Pretty much, it's, a, it's been used mostly on the space shuttle. It did two Titan three flights. The first flight it had, the guidance system and tracking system failed, but it Ooh. worked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Those were reasons for a space shuttle mission delay, because it just didn't work. It's like, oh, we can't... Not, we're not putting this in the space shuttle, guys. <laughs> Does it Doesn't work? work? No. Yeah. Well, then why are we putting it on the space shuttle? So this is, used mo- yes, this is mostly used for TDRS and DOD missions. Okay. It's a cute little stage. I, I don't know, you can see there's a person there. It's kind of big. Yeah, it, I mean, it's little compared to, like, most other rockets. The space shuttle itself, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, it does the job. It's worked pretty well. It also flew on Titan IV. Yeah. Because it's a shuttle surrogate vehicle. Right. Yeah. Because of the reasons why. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the deployment sequence, where it does a nice little loop-de-loop, right? Mm-hmm. They had a deployment. IUS, you know, ignites. Burns. Jettisons the stage. Second stage burns. Does some maneuvering, then they separate and deploy. Yeah. Whole minute thing. Whole thing takes what eight minutes? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, eight plus twelve. Yeah. Eight minutes plus twelve seconds. Eight minutes plus thirteen seconds. So, yeah. eight and a quarter minutes. Yeah. yeah. Very fast. Yeah. Well, the space shuttle gets to orbit about eight and a half minutes. So. 
Yeah. This will go into Venus. It's going to Venus, and then Jupiter. And Jupiter. Actually, it's going to do Venus, Earth, Venus, Jupiter. Vivj. Yeah. Okay. Or Vega, I think it was. <laughs> Viger. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at some mission photos, because there's nothing else interesting about this mission. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense to STS-34, no offense to you, uh, Dr. Baker and Franklin Chang Diaz. Uh, so here they are... Uh, they've duct taped a, a kilo of something there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's some crystal growth right there. <laughs> yeah, there's duct tape all over the shuttle in all these pictures. Look, there's duct tape there. <laughs> yeah, there's some duct tape there. There's some duct tape over there. There's just everything's duct tape. It it works. Look, there's more up there. Yeah, look. yeah it's an incredible. Uh, yeah, it's incredible space technology. Duct so right, tape. <laughs> so right behind them, that's the 3M polymer growth experiment. That's okay. what's right behind them. And, oh, oh, look at that. That's oh, a laptop. Look at that technology. <laughs> I think the first email was sent from one of those. Not on this mission. I think it was, a, it was I think Shannon Lucid's third flight, she sent an email oh. from the shuttle. Wow. Yeah. So here she is. These are different images. <laughs> uh, so yeah. here she is working with the 3M polymer experiment. So that's the control panel for that. And that's the, you know, the carousel and the heat exchanger. Mm-hmm where they got the little horses going up and down. Yep, and the carny in there somewhere. Trying Careful to with your money, wide. Shannon. Yeah. Uh, so there's so there's Williams, Macaulay. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's doing a stand-up routine. <laughs> but a great audience. <laughs> yeah, it's a captive audience. Every time someone's on a submarine, oh, God, no, not more. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh. Yes, I know how hot the bunks were. You don't have to keep telling that story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is them on the flight deck. There's... Look at all those buttons and switches. There's a lot of buttons. There's a lot of those. You got, like, redundancies of redundancies. Well, yeah. You don't want it to break. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Uh, so I guess they brought Tide Pods on the mission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> If your pee looks like this color, you know that it was There's successful. There's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Stop eating the Tide Pods. <laughs> we'll duct tape you to the mid-deck wall. Yeah. I and you don't get to might... fall down later. There is no down. <laughs> I think this might be part of the polymer experiment. Okay. Or one of the human growth hormones. Well, judging by remember. the numbers, it's somewhere between three and five. So four. Yeah. yeah. It's clearly a four. Yeah, I gave it a four. Yeah. And then these are the printer paper. It looks like it folded them over, so the printer jammed. <laughs> That's to be expected. Yeah. The printers don't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're not meant to. <laughs> I think this is the printer right up here. I think this is the printer or a DVD. No, this is the VHS player. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are you or put the in the, the movie, and it comes out as 480p. <laughs> yeah. Or 480 it's interpolated. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, and it's Ice Station Zebra or like Run Silent, Run Deep. It's, because yeah, Macaulay brought all the submarine movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> see, when I was on a submarine, you would never see the sun. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I gotta send so one of the first emails in space because that's one of the duties of the astronauts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tweeting at somebody, a flat earther. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this is actually, a, so this is of Galileo deployment, so that's the high gain antenna. Oh, okay, that's the top of it. Yeah, it's, that's, yeah, it's Galileo poking its head out. And there's okay. this, and there's, of course, clouds, and, you know, and then there's Shannon working the experiment, or, you know, emailing. Yeah, after successfully duct taping the wires to the walls. Yep. <laughs> hey, it works, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, do that, and, you know, <laughs> I used to do that at my job, so... <laughs> I can't talk about what I what I work on, but someone tried to Velcro something. Uh, so I got one picture of someone with sunglasses on. Nice. <laughs> there we go. It's Shannon Lucid. She's got the sunglasses on with uh, Baker. And they got the iOS deployment uh, control list, CL. I don't know. It's it's for the thing. Yeah, it's, it's part of the deployment. Uh, and they got you know one, two, three behind them. I don't know what's in there. Well, three Air. things, obviously. Barf bags, maybe. We got wires going into it. I don't know what that is. Yeah. 
At some point, we will know every part of the space shuttle. At some point. Not this point, though. No, we're still no. novices. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a stowed uh, space suit. Yeah, hey, look at that. Point suit, yeah. So yeah. This, oh, yeah, so we're, this is back, right? Aft. Okay, yeah. Because you got the, uh, the mid-deck um, light. Not the lights, the... Windows. Um, windows. So that's aft. As you can see, I can spell very good. Yeah. Also, why wouldn't you point forward? Because that's usually where you want to be pointing. Okay, I'm letting you get incinerated by the uh, by the ignition of the SSMEs. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> I've stopped negotiating with the FBI. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Shoot me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they do do that sometimes. <laughs> there's plenty of there's plenty of space in the flame trench. They have to worry about hitting the shuttle. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, Macaulay again. And he's got a... I think that's the plan for replacing the lithium hydroxide canisters. Oh, right. As they do in the submarines. Yeah. Again, that's where they had to bring them on. <laughs> yeah. Gotta yeah, fix these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because also the nuclear power, right? Yeah. submarines yeah. are nuclear power. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's that's why he was chosen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's used to it. He likes it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here they are eating. This is the meals. Oh, uh, wonderful. Oh, yeah, isn't that great? The Tide doesn't Pods. It, doesn't it look delicious? Mm-hmm. I like eating jelly yeah. as every meal. Again, Submariner, he's used to it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Franklin seems to like the food, too. He looks like he'd have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what... I don't... Wait, I, I think one of the mission plans actually did have what they were eating. Or I might be thinking of one of the Apollo missions I was looking at the press kits for. Because the, the Apollo press kits have everything on them. Yeah. They're like 100 plus pages long. Jeez. I don't, yeah. So, yeah, they're having food. Space food. and Oh, look, there's a tape dispenser. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, so there's, yeah, and there's, there's the payload bay without, the, without Galileo in it. Cause without they, the star. Know. It's like an empty stage. Yeah. What will they do? Other astronaut stuff, I assume. Yeah. We'll eat space food and listen to the, the stand-up. <laughs> yeah. Submarine stories. Yeah. In space. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, so this is what I was telling you about. So there's the interface. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's where that is. All right. So Atlantis lands at Edwards Air Force Base on October 23rd, 1989 at 9.33 in the morning. So, eh, it's a bit early in the morning for them. And yeah. it's two orbits ahead of schedule because of winds. <laughs> this is just a cursed weather mission. Yeah, it is too much. <laughs> yeah. So at least, hey, at least it's not, nothing like uh, Venus. <laughs> yeah. Which you know, it's 250, 150 mile an hour winds. You're not going to land in this, buddy. I yeah. can't land you. <laughs> yeah. Ever. <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure most planes can take off at, that, at those wind speeds. <laughs> Headwind, yeah. Yeah. Actually, there is a job you can have where you make tables and charts for takeoff conditions. That sounds really interesting. Oh, it's so boring. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, well, you're carrying this much cargo in these spots. Where can you take off? What are the limits? Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Making that it is, a, a table and a chart. That is someone's job. Wow. Someone, ha Yeah. Yeah, that's that guy would listen to submariner stories with great intent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'd take notes he'd, and everything. <laughs> he'd be excited about that. <laughs> yeah. So the mission's not that long. It's four days, twenty-three hours, thirty-nine minutes, and twenty-one seconds with seventy-nine orbits. Nice. Not that again. Get up, toss it out, and come back. Yeah, their the whole. I mean, their whole thing was deploying Galileo. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't much to have to do after that. <laughs> yeah. So during the flight, uh, Franklin Chang Diaz spoke with the president of Costa Rica. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got to speak with them. I think in Spanish. Oh, okay. So, that been fun. Yeah. Not the president of the United States. Yeah, no, why would you want to talk to that loser? Yeah. Well, it is George Bush Sr. I mean, he, he is kind of a dork. Yeah. <laughs> no one really remembers him, right? Because it's Reagan, you know, with the whole, you know, because Reagan had that energy to him. And then you have Bill Clinton, you know, playing the saxophone, like, you know, this you know, kind of Arkansas. I'm going to try to impersonate him now. Okay. I'm going to play the saxophone. I can't do it now, because now I have to. 
playing the saxophone. I like playing the saxophone. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> vote for me in the presidential election. I'm not a nerd. Uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with my presidency. <laughs> nothing bad's gonna happen between me or my wife. It's all gonna be great. We could just play the saxophone. <laughs> let's let's land this mission before yeah. we keep go down that path. <laughs> yeah. So on October 22nd, during the flight, the gas generator fuel pump system on uh, heaters for one of the APUs failed to recycle. Oh, no. Bit of an issue. Yeah. Not a, you know, catastrophic, but it's a bit of an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the flash evaporator system on the radiators did have some trouble. Oh, that's, that's bad. And the cryogenic oxygen manifold and tank 2 failed to close. Uh, okay, how, how bad is that? It's not that bad. Uh, okay. Because the oxygen, because they have cryogenic oxygen, cryogenic hydrogen on the shuttle for the fuel cells. Right. They react those, they burn them, and then they make water. Okay. Electricity oh, yeah. and water. Right. Good. Apollo 13, right? Yeah. Oxygen tank. That's what blew up. Right. Not on this one, though. Of course. So you want to talk about some scientific results? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. So this snake here. Mm-hmm. So what this shows is that there's crystallization happening. Oh, yay! That's all I could understand from the paper I read on this. <laughs> they grew some crystal. <laughs> yeah, they grew some crystal. Uh, the ice growth crystal experiment, they had to reset it because it didn't work the first time. Oh. And then it crystallized. They grew some crystal. They grew some crystal. Yep. So it really I... makes these missions worth it, growing that crystal. Slinging that crystal. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> the mad skills. <laughs> Science, yeah. <laughs> and then the other one I got was the uh, SBUV science results. Oh, which, doing 9-11. Yeah, so as you can see, this is the first tower. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> it's the one of the biggest national tragedies we've ever had, and everyone jokes about it. Yeah. <laughs> what a weird way of coping with that. Yeah. That's what we'll call it. It's- yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? About six months before that happened, there was a guy on airliners.net who just asked the question, hey, what if a plane, like a 767, struck the World Trade Center? What would happen? Because right, they were thinking about the Empire State Building, because that was struck by like a B-17 what 17 or B-25. Yeah, a bomber struck it. Yeah. And everyone was saying, okay, well, if that happened again... Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, those bombers are very small and very light compared to a fully loaded, fully fueled 767 traveling at over yeah. 500 miles per hour. Full of George Bush certified thermite. We're not yes. going to go down that path. <laughs> oh, my God. You ever see the comments like, the well, there is your problem on like the 9-11 episodes? Uh, it's, 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 oh, it's terrible. It brings we, out the crazy. We've destroyed our comments section by now. <laughs> no one watches these, so it's Okay. <laughs> So yeah, we're this is how we're going to gain viewership for yeah, the 9-11 <laughs> conspiracy theorists. What does 9-11 have to do with the Galileo mission? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> exactly. We're on to you. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, so what this, this, what this chart here shows is the irradiance ratio between okay. the NOAA spacecraft and SPUV. Okay. That's all I understand. So the ratio here, as you can see, in different wavelengths. It, it kind of it goes up. They go up. <laughs> they go yep. up. Line goes up. So here in the UV spectrum, it goes up. So I'm assuming the radiance ratio of 1 means that they're identical. So there. That's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all I understand. Oh, Nimbus 7. That's the precursor to the NOAA satellites. Ah. Yeah. All right. That neat? Yeah. I wonder what happened at 330 uh, nanometers. Because it looks like it, it like peaks there. And then 230? Here? No, no. 330. 330. Right here. Yeah. Because that... Oh, that... There's that, a little peak. That mound? Yeah. I wonder. I don't know. I'll let the nerds figure it out. Yeah. People who actually understand these charts. So that's the mission. Wow. Yep. Incredible. What did we learn today? <laughs> we learned that no one did 9-11. <laughs> yes, we have a new 9-11 conspiracy theory. <laughs> We're in on it. <laughs> <laughs>
This is terrible. We're the, we're the truth finders now. We're horrible people. When we do Galileo, we better not do stupid stuff like this. Okay. <laughs> yep. So yeah, this is a good. Is this good art for that though? Look at that. Yeah, this is really good art. Yeah, I like that kind of art. And this is the crew. They'll, Franklin looks like he's having a great time on the entire mission. Yeah, he does. He looks like he's just having a blast. Yeah, he got to speak with the president. He got to deploy Galileo. He got to watch 9-11. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> sorry. No. Okay. No. Okay. We're not doing that. I'm sorry. Uh, they also had to suffer through uh, Macaulay's submarine stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she, and Shannon Lucent wore sunglasses for a bit, which made her the coolest part of the flight. Which, I mean, she is pretty cool. Yeah. She's got to fly on Mir. Yeah. She wasn't on Mir when it caught fire. That, that's good. That was, that was somebody else. Okay. <laughs> I told you about that, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> I love that. The NAS, uh, the Soviets, they're not the Soviets, the Russians at the time claimed, oh, they burned for like 14 minutes. Or as the astronaut on board said, 90. <laughs> that's, some, that's some good Russian statistics for you. Yeah. I have no idea what this plushie is. I think it's a character from a comic strip. Okay. I don't know. Looks like a detective? Yeah. Perhaps? That's what I, that's what I was, or a spy. Because I think there's like spy v spy comic strip that existed. Oh, uh, okay. If you type spy in MATLAB, it'll actually display one of the characters from the comic strip. Oh, that's interesting. Nerds. Yeah. yeah if you do it on your laptop, you know, <laughs> station <laughs> technology laptop, yeah. it'll go back and it'll display that. So yeah. we learn anything? Anything real? Anything real? <laughs> you learned about Centaur G. Yeah, I learned about Centaur G. Learned about, um, yeah, learned um, to get to Jupiter, you have to swing by Venus yeah. a couple oh, of times. Um, I just remembered. So the reason I was asking Mom about our vacation photos is because uh, Shuttle Centaur 1, the one you saw the pictures of, still exists. It's still around. It was stored mm. here in Huntsville till 2000, I think, 6. And it was oh. moved to Glenn Research Center at some point. Oh. Now, in 2007, we came on our family vacation here. Mm-hmm. We didn't see it. And then, I remember, when did we go to Niagara Falls? I was like in 8th grade, I think, which would have been, what, 2010? It sounds about right. Yeah, about 2010. That's when it was displayed there. I was asking Mom to see if she had any photos of it, because we might have got a photo of it. I don't think we saw it. Ah, dang it. So we're going on a vacation. Okay. All right. So, if, so when we do Magellan, because Magellan was also supposed to be a shuttle Centaur mission, we'll go to Ohio and... You Never know, return. Of that. Yeah, we'll take pictures of it and we'll wonder. We'll take the Centaur to get out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Gosh, it's the Death Star. Yeah. Yeah, so that's STS-34. Not a particularly spectacular mission. <laughs> nope. Aside from the obvious. Yeah. Good job, Galileo. On the next episode, we're really going to Jupiter to get more stupider. Yes. That's right. We've discovered something on Jupiter. Yeah. A signal. A signal from the moon went to Jupiter. That's, how, that's what happened in the books and the movie. That's, what, yeah. that's the noise where they all covered their ears. It, they weren't yeah. playing modern music or modern music you don't like. It was a signal to Jupiter. Mm. They weren't playing the uh, metal pipe falling dot MP3 yeah. over so. and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, actually, in the book, it's to Saturn. Ah, uh, right. But then they couldn't model uh, Saturn. Yeah. Because so, cause there's an, a moon of Saturn called Iapetus mm -hmm. that is interesting because it's white and brown. Yeah, it's like it's like half and half. Yeah, right. And it's also it's also shaped like a walnut. Right. Because so we thought that was really interesting. So that's where the monolith was in the book. Oh, uh, Okay, but not Titan. No, but with an atmosphere. We didn't know Titan had an atmosphere at that point. Oh, this was the book was written in '67, in coordination with Stanley Kubrick. Right. So they didn't know at the time because the Pioneer probes were '70s, early '70s. Voyager was. Late 70s, Late early 70s. 80s. Yeah. So we didn't know that Titan had an atmosphere. <laughs> Just like, oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> and the fun fact for that is Douglas Turnbull or Trumbull, the guy who did the VFX for Jupiter for 2001, said he would do a Saturn. He had to do one. And mm. he did for the movie Silent Running. You ever see that one? No, I never saw the that one. with Bruce Dern? Nope. I've seen it. Okay. It's okay. 
But yeah, so you made Saturn for that. Specifically so he could say, see, I can do it. I told you I could do Saturn's rings. I told uh, you. Nice. So in the next episode, we're going to Jupiter. <laughs> that's yes. What, that's <laughs> what my wife's saying. We're going to Jupiter with Galileo. And I'm going to warn all of you. This episode's going to be really long. Like, how long is it going to be? I'm going to guess five hours. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. It's almost a working day. Because I'm going to cover everything of this mission. From when it was conceived of as a pioneer successor, all the way to 2003 when it's dumped in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Hey, spoilers! Oh, spoiler alert. Uh, Galileo's dead. This is end of mission after all. It isn't. Yeah, we're not talking... It's still active. We're just messing. It's active. Well, a few more minutes it won't be. <laughs> oh, we're counting down. <laughs> yeah. We're going to uh, fire a Noah beam at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna fire, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Launched from a shuttle centaur. Yep. Boom. Got him. So, yeah. So, just for fair warning for that one, I'm thinking of doing it. I'm going to split it up into three or four parts, depending on how it all plays out. And then we'll do a full episode I'll upload, but I'll also split it up into, like, hour-long segments, roughly. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. It's going to be a series. <sighs> Well, again, yeah, and just to clear, that's going to be uploaded the, the week it's uploaded. It's not going to be in place of other episodes. Yeah. So, keep that in mind. Sorry, but hey. Science. science so much rules. science. Yeah. I think it'll be a fun episode. Trial yeah. by fire. Oh, yeah. This, this is going to be ha- our, our trial. Because <laughs> this episode is, what, 31 slides? Yeah, yeah. this one's probably have 100 or so. Nice. <laughs> but this is an actual picture from Galileo. Ooh. Oh, no. Or is this Void of the Voyagers? Oh, I think, oh come no, on. No, this is Galileo because what I want to do for just as a little side note for you. For the slides, I always pick pictures before this mission took place to show what it looked like before it happened. Mm. Like when we did Vega, that was a picture from uh, like Mariner 10. Ah, okay. Yeah, I do that. Okay. For the most part. So, yeah. So the next episode, we're going to talk about Galileo. The entire mission from beginning to end. Yeah! Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm pumped too. Alright. Well, until then, uh, this has been End of Mission. I'm not letting you go. No? Well, come on! <laughs> nope. We're staying in the flame trench. But we did the, we did the episode. Nope. Not, nope. Nope. <sighs>